okay, I'm going to separate some of my video blogs right now instead of having a whole bunch of stuff shoved together. So I'm going to talk about Macross Delta and I'm going to talk about Game of Thrones. Um, I've been keeping up with the episodes as they come out. I am kind of a stickler at times and I can almost find the videos sometimes like the moment it comes out because I constantly check. Um, there's one thing I wanted to talk about with Macross Delta that um, I don't think anyone else really notices it, but go back and watch episode the first episode two. Right now we're at episode six and they're all subtitled now. So you can find them with subtitles <clears throat> and it's out there. Just go to a search engine and search it, okay? <laughs> uh, there's this character named Messer or Messa. And there's this other guy named Arad or Arid or Arad or whatever, however you pronounce his name. Arad has a, or Captain Arad or whatever, has like a beard. And uh, he's the one, I think, who's mostly uh, vying for Hayate, who is like this new guy pilot. <clears throat> and then Messer is like this dude who has like, he's very proper and uh, stoic and rigid, extreme rigid. He's also um, arrogant, but it's like a cold arrogance. Uh, he's very much a snob. He's very full of himself, but it's like he's like a st he's stone cold, and he has like a, a nickname called the Grim Reaper or the Reaper, <clears throat> and he's uh, supposedly like he he's almost like a he's oh I, I kind of wonder if he's borderline autistic or Asperger's because he has like a personality issue, but he's like incredible pilot. And everybody is always like very impressed with the way he flies. But just because somebody is good at something or good at flying doesn't really mean they should be in charge or be a leader. <clears throat> this guy Messer, like I, I don't know if like same sex couples or whatever is frowned upon or not. I'm really confused because it looks like there's two members of Valkyra that actually seem to be a same sex couple females. Like, I'm, it looks like that. <clears throat> Uh, whereas in the actual military itself, I don't know if that is, uh, frowned upon or what. I just don't know the rules about that. But Messer, he seems like a closet gay or closet some, either that or there, or Arad and Messer have a past because the way that the scenes are shown, it, it almost can seem that way at time. There's like a locker room scene, which I thought, like, why did you do a locker room scene? And why did you do it that way? Why didn't you just have them just sitting down in the locker instead of, you know, putting their clothes on? Like, were they, you know, it, I don't know. Okay, my imagination would be went a little wild there. Also, Messer, despite being like Mr. Proper in some ways, he holds it against Mirage for doing that. And his way of like going against some of the grain of this properness is that he has this sort of semi mohawk, faux hawk type hairdo going on. Okay, not only that, but there is this almost totally naked hot chick with giant boobs who has like the hots for him really bad and he blows her off and uh, in other episodes, okay? In fact, he seems to have a, he almost comes off as chauvinistic in that he's a woman hater, okay? It's like, it, it, it's it's subtle, but it's like there, okay? <clears throat> but for um, Arad, he is like all about this guy. He's content with this guy. He is very social with this guy. He is very open to this guy. He cares about uh, everything or anything Arad uh, Captain Arad says, and I don't think it's just because he's, like, the captain, okay? And also, Arad gives him criticism, like, oh, don't be too hard on Hayate, or don't be too hard on these other people, right? Because, I mean, he's not just being too hard on them, he's being abusive, okay? He is abusing the people he's supposed to be in charge of. He's not actually supportive of them at all, it's actually, like, detracting from any success that they could have. <clears throat> you know? Also, um, Messer, he is like, he self-identifies with his job. It's a, it's like, a, it's like a thing a lot of men do that uh, are workaholics or the type of uh, personality type that are like addictive personalities that glom onto their uh, job. You know, it, he, I feel like he doesn't, the idea of vulnerability bothers him and anything outside of the job is like frivolous or uninteresting and he resents anything 
outside of it. Like Hayate is like a different personality type and um, he has different potentials and he just, he's a, just a different, his mind is different than everyone else. And he has like a freeness, but yet he, he has been lazy at times or whatever, and he's unrefined. Whereas Mirage is too, is super rigid at times, but and then he holds that against her because he can see because he can see her flaws rather than really really helping her it, when he gives her the information like oh you're too by the book you're too this you're too that um you know he he t he tells her her flaws but it comes off like an attack like he's attacking her because of those flaws that he's noticed rather than uh positively reinforcing or giving some like feedback or suggestion he, he it didn't really come out like that he also said to hayate like you're not worth my time you're not worth talking to that is that is a straight up abuse of power right there okay so when he's walking around after he leaves the locker room with arad okay and they're talking and they're all casual and you can actually see his face and he's content right but then the chick comes again which is just like before when they were at the it's like a I don't know if it's like a bar or a restaurant or whatever where, uh, where in one of the other episodes. <clears throat> but when that chick is there, he he can't stand it. It's like, oh, freaking A, it's the chick again, right? And then all of a sudden, oh, I have work to do. I, I need to bury myself in my work. I have to go work, okay? Really? Really? I, it, it, this reminds me of like typical behavior of like dudes that are like in love with somebody. And when something else sort of interferes and it's not all about them and they can't control the situation and they don't want to be equal with another party or another person, uh, so they just up and blow it off and they just leave. They just, uh, oh, oh, I have to go. Uh, and the, the excuse is always, oh, well, my work, my work, I need to do my work. I'm working, I'm busy. Okay, when you actually doesn't have to do that. Like, you have free time. Okay, but also because he will do that, he will use that to promote himself as I'm more dedicated than you and you're not good enough. When actually he's not, his total motive for doing that isn't really the way he portrays it. Okay, it's a little psychoanalysis right there. <clears throat> so I definitely think that there's uh, something going on between Messer and Arad, whether it's mutual or not. I don't know, but definitely I have Messer pegged as he's he is probably in love or has some really deep feelings for Arad. Okay, <laughs> so there's that. So go ahead and watch it again. And then I want to talk about like Game of Thrones. I don't really want to give away too much stuff, but I have um how many episodes? Is it like three or four? And I've been watching them. And uh, somebody's back. That's all I'm gonna say. Uh, I just wish the episodes like weren't cut so much. I feel like there's probably a lot more shot. I, I kind of wonder if there's a lot of more scenes that were actually shot, but then they cut it and cut it and cut it to fit like a time slot. I if I just wish it wasn't like that. I wish it was just like full on. <clears throat> I wish there was more to the story. Uh, um, Game of Thrones is one of those like guilty pleasure things like if you want to call it pleasure that like I can't stop watching it and it's 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 horrible in so many ways um also another thing is uh Aya I, I always want to call her Aria it's Aya Aya I guess Aya is maybe becoming something or there's probably going to be more to the story or the plot with her. I guess she went through like a hard lesson right now. Uh, and then what else? Um, what else? Uh, the 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 three eyed raven is like a is like an old man in a tree. Okay, which I think you should know that by now. And so I don't want to give out too many spoilers, but this guy is like his shifu, like his master teacher or whatever, is teaching the kid, I can't remember his name the second, the kid, the crippled kid, the kid with the, he's paralyzed. Um, he keeps, he's tell, he's pretty much saying, I'm going to tell you everything, but yet he doesn't tell him everything and he doesn't show him everything. Like he's going to teach him and show him everything. And also he, the, the kid was concerned that he was going to be stuck there forever or that he was going to end up like an old man at a trait. Well, you're, he's not going to be. So what's going on? And then another thing is uh, the kid, while you were going to the past and viewing the past, 
the old man or the three-eyed raven, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> um, he is under the impression that time is fixed, that the ink is dried, so he says, and that nothing can be changed. But the kid calls out to his dad, which also the the, the father, or not father, the um the three-eyed raven is showing him things that things the way he believes things are and the way he believes things were, the actuality of the way things actually were are not true. But as he went back in time to view it, it's almost like a virtual reality or whatever, he yelled at, he yelled out for his father, but his father ap appeared to actually hear him. So the question is, like, is it because, like, it's imaginary, like, it's in their mind, like, it, like that they're viewing the past, that, it, that it's not really, really the past, or, or can the past be changed or altered that's kind of the thing also why does he always pull the kid back you know the kid it's like the the, the whole flashback like it's almost like they're going through like a like a trance um meditative like uh what do you call it incubated dream type thing where they can view the past and or their mind is traveling to the past and they're experiencing the past right and um, it's almost as if, like, maybe the kid might be too p more powerful than even that the the, the three eyed raven or the old guy thinks that he actually is, and that uh, maybe he doesn't want him to know that he's that powerful, or maybe he doesn't want him to, or maybe he actually thinks that he can't change the past. But maybe he's starting to realize this kid could, or maybe time isn't as he thinks it is, or I don't know, this kind of gets into like this continuum kind of a stuff. Uh, I don't understand how the story got all screwed up with Daenerys, because like, she had all this power, and now she's powerless. And then same thing with the other king, with the, the boy king, uh, the, the, the king, uh, I can't remember their names. Uh, the boy king that's married to Marjorie. I forgot his name. But um, how is it that his brother, the asshole, was so freaking powerful? And now he's king and he's actually the good king, but he's powerless. And it also looks like the religious guy is trying to work his, like, manipulation on him. So I... Like, it's weird. Uh, like, I can't stand Cersei at all. I can't stand her. The actress is fabulously good at playing this part because I, because as this character, I hate her. <laughs> um, but after she went through that whole, like, walk of shame thing, I actually felt so bad for Cersei in the previous season. Uh, apparently there was different actresses that played that. Whoever those actresses were, they acted their asses off. Okay, literally. Like, there's the ass, like, right there. And that was some, like, per, like, that, like, whoever played those, whether it was her or a different actress, they deserve an award for that because that was incredible. I can't, I don't know anybody who would put themselves through that kind of a thing. I mean, unless you were a hardcore actor, and you were so committed to your craft. Jeez, I was just so moved for that. It's just, ooh. But I, I definitely felt really sorry for Cersei. So you got, like, this villain, like, she gets her comeuppance. But I honestly, I don't really think she deserved that kind of a comeuppance. But um, having been put through that, it's it's bring the, 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 the crafty revengefulness, the dark side of her, because she was humiliated, it didn't really knock her down several notches, only in the moment. But when she recuperated... Like, she's more determined than ever. <clears throat> also, Cersei doesn't really have any power anymore, and people are, like, rubbing it in her face. So, <clears throat> I feel like she's probably going to try some dirty trick or something later on. I would love to see, what's this, the Sparrow or whatever, the guy that's in charge of um, the religious movement. I can't remember the names. I can never remember names. I'm terrible with names. But uh, I want to see that guy gutted, and I would love to see Aya gut him, I don't know, or somebody, or even Jamie Lannister, or um, or the king himself, the little, the kid king, because um, 
He's so manipulative. Also, like, he never asks, like, anytime you question him, he'll just change the subject. He's like, it's like these religious fundamentalists. They always make it about gods. But God, the gods tell him, and, and, and he knows everything about what the gods say, but he'll say that the gods said it. Like, ugh. And then, um, so Jon Snow, he made a vow until death. And he did die, so his vow is done and fulfilled. So off he goes. I don't know what he's going to do. I'm kind of wondering if Jon Snow is going to have some kind of superpower or whatever. I'm just very curious about that. I've seen a number of speculations about who his real mother really was. Um, things, things like that. Um, and since we keep going back and having these like... Uh, visions of the past of the way things really were like with Hodor and uh the father um I'm actually kind of wondering if that might actually show who John's mother actually is which might not actually be who people think it is and I'm wondering if that has something to do with the tower it was like a, or somebody was screaming or something which I think was a tower See, now I want to go watch it again, right? <laughs> um, so I don't know. See what happens. But uh, I had to get my geeky nerdness on fantasy and sci-fi and all that stuff. So there you go.